Hey guys, my name is Nick, I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I created a lot of content for MSPs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up an email profile for an iOS device using a configuration profile in Microsoft Intune. I've mentioned with the other videos that I've created here for iOS features and restrictions, I would highly advise to check out my other videos on iOS enrollment up methods just so you can see some of the settings that are applicable. With this iOS email profile is applicable to both BYOD devices and also corporate owned devices. So just take that and note that. The other thing I wanted to mention here is that when you create a profile, if you want to take advantage of the SMIME encryption that's available as well too, you need to create a PKCS certificate or a trusted certificate here that you can select from that it's going to be using as the authentication method and verification method. So just know that that's a prerequisite if you are looking to use that. Let's go ahead though and get into the email profile. With the email profile I showed in my compliance video there, if you turn on the setting that says you need a managed profile, this is another prerequisite to having that in place or else the device will be uncompliant. But basically here you're allowing it to push out the email profile automatically to the native mail app on the iOS device and you're defining all the settings here. So server name is outlook.office365.com. You have your account name, you can call it whatever you want, just call it the name of the organization. Username attribute, I use user principal name for this and email address is primary SMTP, it's typically best settings to that I recommend. Authentication method, you have a couple up here, certificate, derived credential, which we touched on earlier, or just username and password. Like to enable SSL, like to enable OAuth because it's for modern authentication. It supports multi-factor authentication as well too. So when they are setting up the device, you're still getting that extra prompt to actually configure the, the profile fully and get access to data on the device. For the Exchange Active Sync profile, you could sync all data or you could sync only limited parts of this here and you can give them the ability to change the setting or not. And then with the email settings here, you could enable SMIME. But if you do this, which I'll show you in the demo with the end user, um, you got to make sure you're adding a certificate here from one of the ones you uploaded. So it's either derived credentials or the certificate and you'll see here no certificates available, create one first. That's where I was mentioning you need to create that either trusted certificate or the PK, PCKS certificate in the, in the device itself or the features itself for this to actually show up. And then you can disable them, changing the setting, you encrypt by default, and you can force per message encryption as well too. So you have a variety of settings here um, that, that are available, but I would highly recommend that you add the certificates if you're going to set this up. Otherwise, I would just say you can go ahead and, and disable this and not have to worry about any of these settings and just worry about these last ones, which is showing amount of email to synchronize. You can do this custom, um, unlimited, one month, two weeks, one week. So it's up to you on that one. I just did three days as an example here. Allow messages to be moved to other email accounts. I typically would disable this because we don't want it moving into an unmanaged profile or a personal email address. Allow email to be sent from third party applications. And this is uh, tapping into some security concerns. It depends on the other settings that you've set up. So if you've set it up so that only trusted applications are being accessed on the device, absolutely that's it. Then sure, maybe you enable this, but if it's lots of third-party applications that may be on the device that could be malicious, getting your information or getting that email address, I would recommend to disable this as well. Synchronize recently used email addresses. I would enable that just for simplicity's sake. Um, it does allow you to gather a recent list so that's easier for them and they don't have to type out the email address every time. I'm going to just cancel those settings that I did here and pause and briefly show you the end user experience now and what they see exactly and some of these features that we turned on when they enrolled the device. So I'll be right back. So here we are on an iOS device here and I've went ahead and I'm gonna breeze through the enrollment process here because I have another video that shows you this more in depth. But basically this is a BYOD device. We've installed the company portal app and we're downloading the management profile from Intune here. 
So if you're familiar with the settings, you have to install the company portal app and then installs the management profile in the settings section here. And you have to go ahead and verify, verify the install and push this down. From here, it'll just ask you again for more verification. And then it'll install that profile, which pushes down all of the device compliance policies and profile configurations we've created, like the email profile that we've walked through here. And you can select what type of device it is, corporate or personal, and continue. And this is where it's going to go through and try to confirm if it has the necessary settings or not. And this is where, if you've watched my uh, iOS device compliancy policy that I pushed out there, it wasn't compliant because the email profile wasn't configured and that was one of the settings that I turned on. It's basically here just saying, like, hey, I want to manage these apps because those were part of the apps that I had installed. And now here, this is the email profile where it's saying, hey, I need your password in order to finish setting this up. So it goes through and brings you into your Microsoft account here. You can just simply type in your password. And then when we're done here, it'll authenticate and then all my mail will start syncing based off the settings that I put down there. In this case, it was the three days, but that was custom to you there. So that's everything that it pulls down and you'll go through and it'll finish confirming the device settings here to actually finish setting up the device and get it into a compliant state if you've set that policy at that level. So you'll see it that, that it says in compliance here on the device itself. Back in the Intune portal here, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is if you come into the iOS devices section and you click on this device, you can go under the device configuration section here. I've showed this in the other videos, but I want to make sure I show it here as well. You can see the iOS email profile that we created it's in the succeeded status. There's not too much of, as far as metadata that you can go that it'll say here, but it'll be at a pending status if they haven't typed in their password yet or failed. It's been more of a certain amount of time where they typed in the wrong password or something like that. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys here. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please like or subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.